what's up everybody welcome to my channel my name is Emma Morrison and in this video today I will be sharing with you how you can install and configure SQL Server on an AWS EC2 instance and I will also be sharing with you the three things that you need to do to be able to successfully connect to your SQL Server so without further ado Let's get right into this video. So head over to amazonfreetier.com. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. Now once you're there, you want to select EC2. And here it's saying 750 hours per month for 12 months. Now that's a lot of hours to get started with. Now I already have an account, so I'm just going to log in and continue the process. So we are going to select instances, launch instances, and we are going to be giving our server a name. So let's say mtech, and we are going to be selecting Windows. So here it's saying your security group will be overwritten. That's fine, confirm changes. So note it's saying free tier eligible. So we're going to continue to the next step. Free tier eligible again. We're not going to be changing that. And if you change it to one of these options, you're gonna end up paying Amazon some money when you're finished with these services. Now continue. Or do you want to connect to your server? Allow RDP from anywhere. We don't want that, that's bad practice. So I'm going to say my IP. And if, do I want to allow HTTPS traffic from the internet? No. Do I want to allow HTTP traffic from the internet? No so here we have this option to configure our storage now in the ideal scenario you don't want to have multiple drives so like a storage drive and a drive for a log but because of the free tier we are using we're not going to be adding any volume and in the real work world you're going to be really given these servers you might just request the space you want and they will be added depending on the structure of the organization so this portion of it you don't have to worry too much about it let's see advanced details all right so we're just going to be keeping the advanced as default and we're going to be launching the instance so let's create a well i already have a key here so i'm just going to use one or you can just create a new one and save it on your machine you want to keep your key here safe at all times now let's view instances Now my instance is running. So the next step is remote our RDP to our machine. So in order to RDP our remote to our client, we need to download the remote desktop file. And then we also need to get the password. You can also RDP using this name here. So you could just copy and paste it and then you see remote remote desktop and then you connect and our username is administrator but at this point we don't have any password so what we need to do is get the password so when we're creating the so when we're creating the instance we're asked to create a key file now we're going to need to convert that key file because I actually save that key file as a ppk and we need a p that pem file to decrypt the password so select get password now here it's saying browse our key pair but if we actually open the ppk file it's not going to work so now we need to download putty if you don't have that on your computer and then convert a ppk file to a pem that pem file so this is the instruction i'll leave it in the description of the video as well so the first step is to start putty chain now the next step is to choose the ppk file load private key downloads and win ppk 
now it's asking for a key phrase which is optional we don't need to do that and now so step 3 is optional so from the menu so now we are going to export to open SSH key yes we're going to be saving in download same way so it's win key dot pen save now let's validate that downloads and we have a win key dot pen so now let's go back to our AWS console browse key open pen and now we can successfully decrypt our administrator password so this is the long length password for the administrator now you want to ensure you keep your passwords in a safe place so this is key pass is a tool that i use ec2 admin so don't worry about these names and password i'll be deleting this instance as soon as i'm complete with this tutorial but i'm just showing you the regular routine and how it operate in a production environment in any company copy the password save and ensure you save it before you do anything else now let's go back to our rdp instance remember me select ok and bam we are in so we have successfully set up an ec2 instance on amazon web services now the next step is to get a copy of microsoft sql server and install it sql server developer edition select server downloads so we're going to be getting the sql server on premises and select download add add and then select the developer edition save open folder so at the beginning of the video i mentioned that in a reproduction scenario you would have like multiple drives drives one for data and one for the log file so we're going to be simulating that on the c drive so this is our download we'll just launch this for now and go back to our c drive right so pause that pause that for now so here we're going to say assuming this is the d drive so let's say d for data and l for logs now we're going to have a folder called ms ms sql and for logs ms sql and in this ms sql folder we're going to have a folder called logs so you can also have like a backup folder here for one-off backups so let me create one for this as well so this will be your data folder so that's for our data now let's go back to our installation so let's go back to our so let's go back to our installation so we're going to be selecting custom we're going to keep the media location as default select install this will take a few minutes to complete select install and we're going to be doing new standalone select next accept the terms next next okay 
mixing it mix so we're just going to be needing the database engine services only we're going to be keeping our instance name as default if we're going to be running multiple instances that's when we start to name our instance because the instance id has to be unique now select next so if you're not going to be setting up agent jobs you don't need to set this to automatic for now we can just leave it at manual ensure the sql server database engine is on automatic select next now here you're going to be selecting your authentication mode if you add current user it's going to be the administrator which is added right now what you need to do is enable mixed mode authentication and also specify a sa account sa stands for system administrator this is the account that you use to get into your sql server just to do any form of recovery in the event like you forget like your passwords so we're going to set a sa password so here again back in key pass sa and then the password is automatically generated so i'm just gonna copy that okay and save back to rdp paste space and we can also add like a local user in a work world scenario you might have multiple users who have access to a server and if you want to grant them access from the installation point you can just search the server here you can also you'd have access to <coughs> you'd also have access to to select the domain and then you can select that user so we're not we don't have any other user now so we're just gonna say so we're going to be modifying our data directory so remember the directories we created earlier we created the data directory the log directory and the backup directory so this is what we're going to set now they're all on the c drive but we created some folder to simulate select e change the log directory assume this is the l drive select logs and then for the backup we're going to be selecting the l and the folder called backups now unless the server is a server that is heavily utilized you won't need to touch these for now so let's continue install and that's pretty much it our installation is complete so let's validate that our server is running so in order to do that let's select SQL Server 2019 Configuration Manager Our services is running so you can start and stop and disable your SQL Server from this console Native Client Configurations, Select Client Protocol TCP IP Enabled and this is our default connection port So this is the port that will be used to connect to our SQL Server so let's attempt connecting to our newly installed SQL server. So we're going to be exiting, minimizing the actual server, go over to our PC and launch the SQL Server Management Studio. In order to connect, we can use the public IP address or we can use the public DNS name. So let's select, let's copy the DNS name. Specify here now we are on our local server so the authentication type is going to be sql server authentication remember we selected mixed mode authentication if we did not do that we could not connect from our lab using the windows authentication because the windows authentication now is on will be applicable from the ec2 instance where the windows user will be able to log on successfully so now we have to use the SA account and specify the SA password. So let's say for now, select connect. And it's bad practice to use the SA. This is just for demonstration purposes. So ensure that you have personal accounts set up to connect to your SQL server. So I'm not expecting this to work. I'm actually expecting it to fail. 
So the three things that we need to do to connect to our server successfully is one, enable TCP IP on the SQL server, two, add a firewall root port which is 1433 and three we need to add a security group to the firewall rule on our server so let's go into that let's head back to our server so you're going to launch a sql server configuration manager and head on to protocols for microsoft sql server by default it's disabled so let's enable so that's one of three things now let's go over back to our AWS console. Now we need to add a firewall rule. So let's see a firewall. Inbound new rule. Specify port. Select next. And specify the port that you want to connect to. That's 1433. And it's TCP. Select allow the connection. Select next. Select next and say SQL dev so for most part guys you will never be doing this portion if you are working with like a system administrator the system administrator will do all these things for you but it's good to be aware of what take place in the background so this will help you to be a more rounded database administrator you know how to troubleshoot your problems so select finish and here's it SQL dev now the third thing we need to do is we need to go over to our AWS console and on the instance let's go back from the beginning so select your instance ID go to the security tab right and this is the security group so select the security group action edit inbound rules because we want a connection coming into the server so add rule we're going to be searching for ms sql it's select the port by default and we're going to be copying our local machine name and that's pretty much it save rules and if you want you can always specify a name and say sql test SQL IDP local PC. Now let's go back to Management Studio and try connecting to our server again. Now we are in, and that's pretty much all you'd set up a SQL server in AWS. So managing a database in SQL in AWS is no different from managing a database on premise. And once you know one cloud platform, you can pretty much apply the concept across all cloud platform. So that's it for now guys. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.